It's good for you. Gay rights is good for you. Gay rights is good for you. Yes. Think about this, okay? Don't think of your own self-interest. You know, you probably hear, like, some people say, you know, 10% of the population is gay, and then you, you've probably said, oh, that's not true. 10%'s not gay. You know? No, you want it to be 20%, 30%. The more gay guys there are, the more babes for you. That's the way you, you gotta think of it this way. Gay is good. Gay is good for me. More women for me. Me, 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 me. That's what being a conservative is. Me, me. I need more money. I'm safe and I'm living to get a community. I love gay men. More women. That's what you want. Especially the last one, because I really believe that gay, gay rights and our treatment of how we treat gay men and lesbians is really the last frontier of civil rights in this country that we have to address. And um, and I've decided I had to do something about it, and I'd like to share that with you right now. America, where everyone is equal under the law, where discrimination on the basis of race, creed, or sex is a thing of the past, right? AIDS rotten, dying, spotted faggots are organizing under the banner of gay rights. We have nothing but hate and contempt for these people. Shouldn't they like take all homosexuals from one city and just put them in the city of their own? In 20 states, it is a crime to be gay. The overall crime has dropped in this country, Hate crimes against gay men and lesbians are on the rise. Sodomy laws, laws that criminalize homosexual sex, force gay couples to live under the constant threat of arrest and even imprisonment. We don't need it flaunted. Uh -huh. They're not being persecuted in any way. No! But no single event has galvanized the country's attention toward violence against gays than the brutal, senseless murder last year of Matthew Shepard, the University of Wyoming student who was beaten and left hanging on a fence to die by two thugs who killed him for no other reason than the fact that he was gay. The entire nation reacted with shock, and suddenly some people were starting to pay attention. It was clear what I had to do. Enter our Freedom Riders. The awful truth, gay team. Xavier, Xavier. come call me Kalua. Kalua. A dozen of the most determined, Four. tactically trained, Three. and sensibly dressed right gay up. men and lesbians Three. I could Three. find. We're heading out. Riding aboard 16,000 pounds of hot pink steel and fiberglass, straddling a chop shop customized Ford Slant 6 diesel engine. The Sada Mobile. A sleek chariot of freedom-loving buggery designed to carry our gay ambassadors of love on a whirlwind tour of every single state that made it illegal to be gay. First stop, the state capital in Topeka, Kansas. I was approached by a man who started up a friendly conversation and he eventually turned the conversation to sex. He started asking sexual questions and uh, once I admitted what I'd be willing to do in my bedroom, I was arrested. Well, that's why we've come to Kansas right. uh, with our Sodomobile. Uh, we're going to each of the states where these laws are still on the books, and we're breaking every damn one of them. Is there room for one more? There was a reason I had come to Topeka. Topeka is also the home to Pastor Fred Phelps, the Baptist preacher who enjoys picketing the funerals of people who have died of AIDS. When I saw Phelps on TV picketing Matthew Shepard's funeral and harassing his grieving parents, I knew something had to be done. I decided to pay a visit to Pastor Fred. So you like funerals? Well, you know, uh, it's a good time to preach. Yeah, yeah. It's a good time to go out in Casper, Wyoming to inject a little sanity and a Bible truth into that insane orgy of homosexual propaganda and lies. I mean, every fag group in the country was using that, making that poor dead boy a poster boy to promote their filth and encouraging all the youth of America to hold him up as somebody to emulate. He was not a good man. This is not a good thing he did. He's in hell now. That's what needs to be preached. You're like dogs eating your own vomit. Wake up. 
dogs eating their own vomit. Yeah, but they, well, but they do that. I mean, my dog eats his own vomit. Fred knew a lot about dog vomit, and I wanted to hear more. But I thought it was about time Fred met my friends on the Sodomobile. Well, we brought along, you know, some of our friends who are traveling across the country, uh, so you could talk to them. This is our Sodomobile. We'd like you to come on board. Oh, I'm not coming on board. You give it a shot. Here they are. No, I'm it's not coming on board. Got children. And then the sodomy really began. You don't want me in there. We were breaking laws that Phelps hadn't even heard about. Way to go, guys. Way to go. You're doing good. Don't get too close. We'll have to call the police on you. Celebrate the freedom of this country. I thought it was time for a free and open exchange of ideas. You guys are headed straight for hell in a faggot's handbasket. There's no need to get this close. Reverend Fred was outnumbered. And for once, he left in defeat. It was victory number one for the Sodom Mobile. I think he felt the love. Then it was on to the open road, heading south in search of new wrongs to right. The wheels on the bus go round. Long days and even longer nights of traveling, often with nothing more than sodomy to pass the time. Everywhere we went, people came out to cheer us on. Our message of goodwill was sweeping the nation. And on the horizon, a golden opportunity that couldn't be passed up. A chance to break the laws in three states at once, at the meeting point of the Arkansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma borders. There was a lot of love at the border that night. And I mean, a lot. Heading east through Missouri, where we showed the Show Me State a few things they hadn't seen before. Okay, boys, drive safe. a state with no sodomy law, where our freedom riders take a well-deserved rest. Down into Georgia, and then, after a fresh change of women, we headed south toward Pascagoula, Mississippi, the hometown of Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott. Uh, in America now, there's, uh, you know, there's an element that wants to make that uh, alternative lifestyle, uh, you know, the, an acceptable or, or normal in every Trent respect. has some pretty now, cute ideas about what it means to be gay. He thinks it's a disease like kleptomania or alcoholism. Uh, but you should try to, um, you know, work with that person to uh, learn to control that problem. Objections to homosexual or bisexual. How could we find a common language with a guy like this? A senator, a statesman, a... Uh former cheerleader? That's right, homophobic Trent was once a cheerleader at Ole Miss. <laughs> now we knew exactly how to talk to him. Ready? Okay! Swish it over there, swish it over here. E, e R spell square! All right. Come back in and be arrested for trespass. How are you today? It was clear Trent just wasn't going to come out. The all sodomite cheerleading squad had given it their best, but sodomy waits for no man. It was time to move on. Suddenly, word came from Topeka. Pastor Phelps was at it again. There was no time to waste. We had to head north, but quick. How come they hide in the van instead of coming out here behaving like little animals like they were doing out there when there was no camera on them? Living like 
like you're living, you're going to die and split hell wide open. So and if I die, will oh, no, you touch come me. to my funeral? If yeah. I were to die as far as, well, well, how far would you go? You're, you're not important enough. You're not, it's got to be somebody enough? like the president's mother. Furthest you traveled for a funeral? Uh, the furthest we've been to San Francisco to Randy Schultz's funeral. Oh, oh you were there for that? Wow. I missed that one. Oh, we missed that one. Awesome. Well, How was the food? Honest. Come on, just sing Amazing Grace with us. Who do you think I am, Karen Carpenter? No, no, no. <laughs> well, no. Sing, sing a song. Sing a song. <laughs> It was bad enough they bashed gays, but the carpenters? Well, maybe it was the scene. Maybe it was the sodomy. Fred was on the run again. And this time, it looked like it was for good. Victory was ours. But there will always be more work to be done. Wherever there is a sodomy law to be broken or an antique sale to be perused, that's where the sodomobile will go until every gay man and lesbian in the world can raise their voices in freedom. Gay at last. Gay at last. Heavens to Betsy, we are gay at last. Thank you. Thank you. You'll never be back on NBC now. <laughs> <laughs>